Throughout history, religion has played a pivotal role in global society. Religious institutions have been beacons of light in times of war and plague and heralded the fortunes and misfortunes of kings and queens. Christianity spread throughout Gaul during the Roman occupation and then in the Dark Ages when the country was once again in the hands of Frankish kings, the tribal peoples of Western Europe found a solution for their hatred and fear of one another in their acceptance of Christendom. Whatever wars they might wage against each other, the doors of the churches were open to every believer, and throughout the land above the walls and houses rose the familiar sight of the spires and church towers. It's thanks to the monasteries, thanks to the monks, uh, that we can say that uh, this country developed so, so much. We had uh, the kind of monks that uh, cultivated the land and dry this country. This country was so humid, you know, they had to create uh, uh, agriculture, the agriculture in the region. And uh, then we had uh, the Franciscans, the Dominicans, and then further on we had uh, the Jesuits, because the Jesuits were very, very important for the education of children. The order began in uh, uh, Bourgogne, in the middle of France, and uh, it was a reformation from the Benedictine order in the 12th century. Uh, the monks wanted to live uh, a life more silent, more in a bigger solitude, and uh, they established a Cistercian order in the 12th century. We are living always inside of the monastery. We are making cheese here, but you know the monasteries are making all the things. And uh, the main part of our life is the office and also the life uh, of, of the community, all services inside of the monastery. Sainte Marie du Mont des Cat has a guest house where people can stay participate in the services and receive guidance. I asked Frère Guillaume what he thought we could learn from the monastic life. I think uh, discover the joy in silence. And I think the true silence is, uh, is necessary to love. Dominating the old city of Boulogne on the French coast of La Manche, the English Channel, is the Cathedral of Notre Dame. It was built on the site of churches dating back to 636 AD. It seems that in that year, a statue of the Virgin Mary standing in a boat was pushed ashore by angels. Louis XI declared it to be a true Madonna in 1477 and thousands of people from all over the world flocked here, including 14 French kings, five kings of England, evildoers and murderers, to absolve their sins. L'Hospice Comtesse bears witness to the charitable works of the Counts of Flanders. Founded in Lille in 1237 by the Countess Jean, nuns and friars of the St. Augustinian order brought care and consolation to the sick, the needy, and pilgrims of both sexes. In the cathedral in St. Omer is a wonderful pavement, a maze that leads the way to Jerusalem. If you couldn't travel to Jerusalem yourself, you could still accompany those who did with your prayers. And Christianity had found its way across the Channel. To the Canterbury of the Middle Ages came monk missionaries from Rome in 597, invited by King Ethelbert and his Frankish Christian queen, Bertha. Augustine, a Benedictine monk, was commissioned by Pope Gregory to convert the pagan Jutes of Britain, and Ethelbert gave him land to found a church. The success of their mission and the conversion of the king and many of his subjects led to the consecration of Augustine as Archbishop, with his base at Canterbury, and the establishment of a church in which he could set up his cathedra or official seat. 
on the border of Kent and Sussex, I found Bayham Abbey. You'll find that a lot of great abbeys were built in very remote regions, and that's because and the monks looked ultimately for seclusion and uh, privacy. They would always give a traveller a bed for the night and somewhere to stay, but uh, over the years they did become very corrupt until it got to the stage of uh, during the, the late Middle Ages where you could actually buy a little docket that would save you from purgatory or you could buy two and save your parents who had died ten years before from purgatory as well and then you had the sort of the stirrings of the Reformation. The martyrdom of Thomas a Becket at Canterbury and the miracles at Notre Dame in Boulogne saw many pilgrims crossing the channel and the beginnings of the first tour operators. There was no health service in those days in any meaningful sense and if you had the money and you had something wrong with you, you took your money and you went to a holy place and you prayed. After Thomas was sort of, uh, it was clear that he was a holy martyr, they came to Canterbury and they brought great riches and they piled these riches onto Canterbury and all this great place of Canterbury Cathedral which you see nowadays was built by the tourist money. The tourist trade in those days was something fantastic. As society grew richer and men accumulated more treasures, so the church became materialistic. Official Christianity had grown into a gigantic vested interest. 400 years later, Henry VIII stole the lot. And he had reason in a sense because it was all the wealth of the world was being bled to the monasteries because there's nothing to spend it on. Uh, and if you were not well, all you, could, all you could do was carry favor with God, which was the most important part of this life. From time immemorial, the church had counseled kings and queens in exchange for which they donated some of the country's wealth and then understandably called upon the church for certain administrative benefits. It might be construed as just such a benefit when Henry VIII asked Cardinal Wolsey to obtain the Pope's permission for a divorce, since his wife, Catherine of Aragon, had failed to give him a son. The Pope refused. Using the Reformation as an excuse, Henry not only sees the wealth of the church, he also sees the opportunity to break with Rome and get rid of Wolsey. For more information, visit our website on topoftheworld.net.